there was an elderly man. He had a serious hearing problem for years and years. He could hardly hear anything. One day, he went to the doctor and he was fitted with a new type hearing aid to where he could hear 100%. A month later, he went back for a checkup. The doctor said, man, your family must really be happy. Your hearing is perfect. He said, no, I have not told my family. I just sit around and listen to the conversation and I have changed my will three times. <laughs> Dear friends in Jesus Christ, in today's gospel, Jesus calls on us to look beyond the level of our external behavior to the deeper level of our, of our emotions and our motivations. He calls for a virtue that goes deeper than that of the scribes and the Pharisees. He invites us to a way of life that embraces both our inner life and our outer actions. At the beginning of that gospel, Jesus takes two forms of behavior that are clearly in conflict with the Ten Commandments, murder and adultery. He then focuses on what he considers to be the deeper roots of such behavior anger in the case of murder and lust in the case of adultery and he asks us to attend carefully to those powerful actions. Our deeper emotions and feelings are neither good nor bad in themselves. They arise spontaneously within us. However, once they surface, we have choices to make. We can either take some control of our emotions, submi submitting them to the values of the gospel, or we can allow those emotions to take control, control on us. In the gospels, Jesus is sometimes portrayed as angry. Yet, he always allowed his anger to be shaped by his basic commitment, which was the proclamation of God's kingdom. His anger, always at the service of those values of God's kingdom for which he lived and died. Because of that, his actions were always life-giving even when their energy was the energy of anger. He exemplifies that deeper virtue that he calls all of us towards in today's gospel. In the reading, Jesus is declaring that what is of paramount important is what is going on in our depths, our inner life. He invites us to ask, what is it that drives us? Are we driven by emotions over which we have little or no control? Are our lives shaped by our deeper commitments our core values. In the gospel, Jesus is calling on us to attend to our inner life, the wellsprings of our actions, those hidden depths which reveal themselves in how we behave and how we relate to others. 
Paul, in today's second reading, refers to the inner life of God. These hidden depths of God can only be revealed to us, according to Paul, through the Spirit, who alone can reach even the depths of God. The Holy Spirit, who reaches the depths of God, also can reach reaches our own hidden depths. Because, as Paul says in that reading, the Spirit can reach the depths of everything. Whenever we succeed in looking in, into our depths, what we'll find, there will certainly not be all bad, because the Spirit of God is always there. Something of what Paul calls the depths of God reside within our own human depths through the Spirit. In some sense, the deeper we enter ourselves, the closer we come to the Lord who is at the core of our being. That is why we are always capable of great good. As the first reading reminds us that to behave faithfully is within your power. Yet, we know from experience that at times we act out of places within ourselves that have not been opened fully to the Lord's presence. We can be aware of strong forces deep within us that can lead us to behave in ways that are not in keeping with our baptismal identity. We know that some actions can, can be driven by forces within our hidden depths that have not been fully redeemed. As a result, in the imagery of today's first reading, when we act sometimes, we grasp death rather life. We need to keep on asking the Lord to renew our depths, what the Lord, what the Lord really calls us is to have a heart like his, to have something of his mindset, to have emotions, thoughts, and attitudes that are thoroughly shaped by the Spirit. Then the choices we make will correspond to the Lord's will for our lives, and the way we live will be life-giving both for ourselves and for those to whom we relate.